Yo, hey dude, it's Joshy J. Today I really want to try and explain my style, so the type of way that I do art. Um, it's it's quite a tough one to explain, but I think uh, whoever you guys that are watching us, I think you'll be able to learn. I think you'll be able to get a lot from it because um, there's certain subtle things that I think like a lot of people leave out. So I'm gonna try and use this artwork that I have going as kind of a, a reference point for this. So yeah, enjoy. Cool, so jumping right into it. So you can see I've got a sketch here that I did with, I, I used a brush pen and then I, so yeah, I took a photo of it and I just brought it in and changed the level. So I got like a very dark and light kind of a, a look so I could sketch over it. And then I basically just took the, the basic colors that I had for the character and I used a darken layer to be able to translate uh, what colors my character was going to be. Um, if you use a if you use a color layer I find it makes everything look kind of shiny so that's why I avoid the color layer. Um, I've actually only very recently started using the darken layer um, and it actually doesn't really darken it too much which is quite weird. But yeah, so I've got so a lot of the so the stuff that you can see in the scene here is just um, elements that I've taken from the game that I've been working on. Um, it's called Reset Earth. So yeah, myself and my team have been working on it for the last three months. Um, so yeah, I mean, I mean, so when I'm doing a scene like this, the type of things that I'm looking at is just basically putting everything out there. So that's the way that I like to do a lot of the art stuff that I do is. I like to just throw everything at the canvas. So throw the colors there, where the general lighting is, background, foreground, and not detail everything one by one, um, piece by piece is what I mean. So you'll hear this from like a lot of artists. I, I heard Marco Bucci said the one time, is like you wanna bring the whole scene up at once. So that's why I'll never really completely finish one thing before I've moved on to, on to another thing. Um, and once I have all these things in place, then I kind of start to add little accents of where there may be a secondary light source. And that's actually a cool trick that you can learn is if you, if you, you can pick, like say you pick, a, um, like you, you can see here, I've picked a, a yellow as like my primary light source. And you can see it's coming from the top right. And then the bottom left, I've got like this very gray blue. Um, and it's it kind of acts to turn the form a lot more and creates like a lot of visual interest um, and a lot of the edge lighting that you'll do like a lot of the stuff in my styles on my style you'll see me doing a lot of edge lighting and it kind of just pops the form out from the background um, and I find this is like yeah this is a good way to I don't know create like a lot of interest in your in your in your piece so wherever the light's coming from, I do these very straight kind of hatchings. I know a lot of artists do the cross hatching type of things, um, but I quite like the straight line hatchings. They, I don't know, for me, they're really, really interesting. And you can, you can articulate a lot of the form as well by just going along the flow with uh, like which direction the form is going from. You can also communicate a lot of texture with these lines as well. I've seen like quite a few artists doing this. So I use it with my shadows as well, as well as with my lighter areas. So I'm taking like the complete shadow areas and usually where I'll do the hatching would almost be like the fade in between the light and then the dark. Um, yeah, and it's just a personal, a personal choice. Also where it makes a lot of the light the the like the, your lit areas if you are if you're using those hatching lines it it makes the lighting look a lot more dramatic because it's as if the lighting is splashing across the figure like really dramatically cool so i'm just going to jump into real time here just so i can show you guys kind of um the type of movement that i do and uh, when i'm looking at my style and also just like the brushes that i mostly use so this is another piece i did um, mainly it's just this, um, it's this, it's usually just the square fade brush that I use. Um, it's kind of good for blocking everything out. So you can see, let's use a different color here. Uh, let's put this at the top. Okay. 
So this square brush I actually got from one of my favorite artists, but you'll see this thing that you can get is like if you press really lightly, it goes, it's, um, it's not so dark. Um, or doesn't, it's more transparent. And then the darker you press, then the harder it gets. And what's cool about this is that you can block out like large patches of areas. Um, and that's, I dig doing that. I mean, when you're using like these pencil, sorry, like one of these, and one of these hard round brushes is like when you're pressing light it goes thin and when you dark then it goes fat um, and that's cool for some stages but usually the square fade is just the one that I use um, and another cool thing that you can do um, is say you have this blocked out this like fade going on um, then I usually just take like a blender paint kind of a brush and I'll kind of okay that's on a, that's on a different layer um, and then I'll kind of like blend it together so it's more smooth. Um, and another cool handy trick that I picked up from uh, one of my favorite artists is they do this kind of a thing where they, a lot of, a lot of um, artists when they're doing like um, fades, they kind of have this like cross hatching thing going on like this. Um, and it can it can look rad in some places, but it sometimes tends to look quite messy So it's cool to just even do these like streaks like you can see here um, this area over here uh, This area over here um, You can check I did it like over there and it just makes it look really really interesting And it is a stylistic choice obviously for realistic lighting that doesn't necessarily work it actually doesn't work at all. So, so yeah, it's just for these these types of areas. Um, it's like a unique type of a style that looks really interesting. Um, so yeah, also when I'm the way I'm moving my my brush is less straight and direct, and less I'm drawing mechanical things. But it's mostly just quite like an organic type of a movement, um, and it's kind of this this um you obviously would need a wacom to be able to do this um or like a drawing tablet but it's obviously it's more just like pressing hard then light and then pressing hard to finish off with and you kind of get this very nice wiggly type of a, a line and um it just it just makes it look a lot more organic and natural and it has a lot more of a a lot more energy to it um which i think looks really really interesting um, the way I draw hair, I like to use very sharp triangular type of um, type of shapes. It's all kind of in the shapes. Like a lot, a lot of this, the the type of style that I'm doing is like a lot of a lot of shape design. So that's kind of where a lot of your interest will come from. Is if you design really iconic shapes, and the way to do this is you design design your character or your shape or whatever and then you just black it out and you silhouette it and you see if it looks interesting because I mean it's one thing to design something um, accurately and then it's a complete different thing to be able to design it so it looks interesting so a lot of my style just comes from interesting types of things um, interesting like really interesting shapes that break like a lot of the rules I don't really care too much for rules I mean if I was doing illustration maybe I would have to care a lot more for rules but this is this is concept art so it's just about a lot of it is about ideas and the type of art that I do is very stylized um, and yeah so I mean like a lot of so I use a watercolor brush you can see that it's actually second from the top that's I'll use that one and I'll use the square fade brush you can see its name there it's it's that one that's at the top and to be honest it's basically just those two brushes a lot of it just comes from understanding like a lot of lighting so you can work out where you can break the rules a lot of so for example you can see this character has a hand like right in the front so I'm hitting that yellow light on the hand because I really want to pop that hand forward so whatever the things this is just a personal preference of mine is if I want something to stand out I, I use my edge light very sparingly because if I use it too much things are just gonna fight for dominance and they're gonna fight for what's in front and what's behind. So the thing that I really wanna keep in front, I hit that with the edge light and I'll, hit it, I'll also hit it with quite a dramatic second light, secondary light. Um, and then you can just see the, the, um, the elements in the background 
I yeah, I would kind of circle out the elements that I want and then hit it with an airbrush behind. So so yeah, that's kind of so those are kind of some of the tips that that or kind of the ways that I articulate a lot of my a lot of the stylized stuff that I do. Um, I basically only do stylized art. So this what you're seeing here was just one of the splash covers for the game that I've been working on. And um, and yeah, I just, I mean, they actually didn't even ask me to do this. I just really wanted to as like a loading screen. So yeah, I thought this would be a good way to kind of articulate the type of style that I do. And um, feel free to slow it down and dissect it. And if you have any more interest in this type of style and this type of way of doing things, then yeah, shoot questions in the comments and I will try and get back to you as soon as I can. And um, if you want to see more type of stylized stuff, uh, yeah, leave it in the comments and if you like my artwork, then hit a subscribe. Otherwise, I will check you guys in the next one.